Mega Man issue 44. After Roll discovers what happened to Otto because somehow Wily didn't fix him and delete his memory, the story wastes time showing another boring robot master before Mega Man first meets him for padding. What if the text boxes forget to tell us his real name from the game? Somehow, when a robot makes monkey noises, he can understand him, so he thanks him. And somehow, a robot programmed to destroy Mega Man was able to give him an E-Tank to fight fair. Even a child would tell you this is forced of the writing. Mega Man thanks him for the Deus Ex Machina, and once again he doesn't learn his lesson and lets down his guard, trying to talk him into giving him answers when all of the robots he's seen so far just wanted to kill him. IDW Sonic does the same thing with Surge, it's like he's written more like Mega Man than Sonic. So he gets attacked, and he tells Rush to stay back because he can't damage his armor. How does Mega Man know Hard Man's name? He never got told it. I feel like this is Worlds Collide where every sentence in my review has me finding a new plot hole. He gets given a hard time for a bit until he equips the Magnet Missile. And the flashes of light ruin any sort of catharsis of the magnets hitting the bad guy. An explosion stuns him. And somehow he's still able to talk afterwards like the rest when he still feels like fainting. Then eventually Dr. Light tells Roll to calm down, and she tells him she found Otto with his memory boards ripped out. And somehow not put back in, but altered. The lockdown that results is pointless, though, because Proto Man warps to Wily and gives him the weapon data for sabotaging Dr. Light's robot. Because his teleport signal isn't blocked, despite him trying to kill Mega Man before. Wily even lampshades the Dr. Light's a sentimental old fool. I'd rather characters be consistently smart. Like in Pre-50's Archie Sonic, where even Sonic was smart a lot. Just because he wanted Proto Man back doesn't mean it's believable that he'd keep him able to warp into his lab. He could ring his doorbell if he wanted to go back to him. Then there's more padding, where the comic focuses on a robot master somehow talking to himself instead of Mega Man until the second he finds him. How did he not realize this was lame and unwanted? And repetitive, as this could describe every robot master scene. He realizes he can't contact his brothers, and remembers calling Magnet Man's magnets cool, and being thanked for recharging someone. And we don't even see the level because the comic space got wasted on that. Go figure the robot masters would be mad about their brothers being defeated. Then there's a bunch of time spent on him throwing electricity at Mega Man and barely missing. He says he plans on killing Roll too. He keeps dodging energy with predictable dialogue around him until Shadow Blades get thrown through Sparkman's arms, defeating him in one measly shot. He at least apologizes and says he wouldn't have hurt Roll. He would have if Wily told him to. There's some time wasted on boring angst where Mega Man wishes they didn't have to fight, just like X. You'd think the writer would know that nobody liked that whining in X7, so why is he constantly doing it too much with Mega Man? I understand doing it once, but that's all we need. All that matters is he gets his data, of course, and can't contact Dr. Light because he's being threatened by a robot. He asks why, and gets told Wily wants him to learn that he's better than him. Why is the robot programmed to tell him not to be too troubled? Mega Man Issue 45 Mega Man uses the Rush Jet to fly back to his house, which has fire on the inside. He gets shot to the ground by Proto Man, who makes me wonder why he's not trying to save Dr. Light if he refused to kill Mega Man earlier to avoid breaking his heart. Why is he even trying to hurt him at all then? So does he think Wily is going to repair and reprogram him instead, and so he's just holding back with them? Wily tells Doc Robot that it won't be necessary to cause any more destruction if Dr. Light cooperates. But he refuses to give him access to Gamma. There's no foreshadowing to Doc Robot in the comic. At least when she hits him with the broom and realistically breaks it, he becomes interesting because the other Robot Masters argue in his head. So it's not really that they're dead just because their IC chips were used. This concept would have been interesting with a bunch of characters that had actual personalities being fused together. 
Instead, only the color around the text bubbles has any chance of telling you who's talking. And if you aren't a Mega Man fan, you won't be helped by that. After all, there's plenty of robot masters that share the same color as other ones. How is one of the robot masters able to say they're not shooting a child when Wily made him? So the attack misses as Dr. Light hugs her. Somehow a character who is literally named Dr. Wily tells him off for almost hurting Dr. Light, because that doesn't miss the point of his character at all. He has no reason to put all of the IC chips at once into one robot. He would have had a better chance just sending them all after Mega Man as they were. Dr. Light tells Wily he wins, which is smarter than continuing to say no when Roll could get shot any second. She never would have said, don't, because she should know Mega Man would be able to take Gamma. Eventually, Dr. Light tells Wily that Gamma requires a new activation password every day, and only his own voice print would activate it. It says all eight of the energy elements should be powerful enough to move Gamma once before burning out. He tells Dr. Light to turn off the signal jammers and lab defenses, and tells Roll to install the energy elements and teleporter harnesses. I guess by be useful for once, he means useful for his evil schemes, because she served him coffee before. Dr. Light smartly tells Roll to do as he says, and says it'll be alright, as he has his hand on her shoulder. He also calls her dear. While he says he surpassed them, even when working off his scraps, and Dr. Light uncharacteristically grabs him angrily. The robot with a stupid name threatens him, and Wily lampshades with Roll, why did he program so much sass into you? Wily grabs the idiot ball by planning to let Dr. Light keep his children, when obviously it'd be smarter to rebuild and reprogram them. Plus, he kidnapped Roll before. He tells his robot to destroy everything above the hangar in the lab and meet him at the castle. Mega Man fights with Proto Man, who just shields his attacks, and it's ridiculously convenient that Proto Man waits long enough that Mega Man tells him the IC chips are in a rush, instead of instantly shooting him. Somehow this causes Proto Man to decide not to shoot Rush when he's got no reason to care about the one-dimensional evil robot masters. Nothing that matters happens until the lab blows up, and Wily tells Proto Man remotely that he shouldn't worry because he's back at the castle. Somehow, Wily says he's not a monster, and that's why he didn't kill Dr. Light and Roll. Then why did he kidnap Roll in the first place and put her in a room where a lot of fighting would happen? He could have gotten her killed that way. Why did he try to kill Dr. Light with the Met Tool in Worlds Collide, then? Proto Man's relieved that they're alive, and gives Mega Man stuff to fix himself and refuel with, because Wily was too stupid to reprogram him, since that keep things simple. And any rational person would assume that's what he would have done. He tells him where to meet him for the last fight with him and warps away. When he could easily fight him now. And Mega Man hugs Roll. And too many panels are wasted with Dr. Light realistically whining about Wily's betrayal. He lampshades that he's a fool and deluded. Roll and Mega Man hug and flatter him and the story starts wasting my time being depressing. He somehow says he has no right to ask Mega Man to save the world. He agrees and he thanks him, and he plans to fix Mega Man and Rush. Wily looks at a schematic for a cranial override and control device, and eventually Mega Man thanks Dr. Light and Roll hugs him. Dr. Light puts his hand on Mega Man's shoulder, and Mega Man pets Rush before they warp somewhere, and the story ends there. Mega Man Issue 46 Wally says to himself that after a few hours of uninterrupted work, Gamma would be his. And Dark Robot tells him Mega Man's here when nobody's supposed to know about this island, even though it's the future, so every island in the world would be known about. I guess what he means to say is that nobody knows he'd be here. And I guess the reason nobody found the fortress on Google Maps is that nobody was actually looking at an uninhabited island. He's told that Proto Man invited Mega Man here to have one last fight with him. That doesn't explain it, because he could have had a fight with them anywhere, including the same place he was at before. It only makes sense if he invited him to the island because he wants Wily stomped, but that'd also be confusing as it's not like he killed Roland Dr. Light. 
A bunch of time is wasted with dialogue between them that's so predictable it's not worth reading. Go figure, Mega Man lampshades how confusing he is. Eventually he starts shooting at Mega Man and he joins in, and it's explained that he's not going to use the Robot Masters as weapons because they need to be out of weapon energy for the castle. He also tells Rush to not get involved because he needs them for the castle. Meanwhile, some comic space is wasted on a doctor like Dixing Otto who had nothing to do with Mega Man 3. He apologizes for the Rush job and gets told not to worry, and Otto reveals out of nowhere that he doesn't simulate emotions like the advanced robots do, and so he's fine, even though he was still able to cheer for Mega Man. Roll says she should be out there with Mega Man and calls out and hugs Dr. Light. Wily tells his robot to activate the castle's defenses. Protoman warns Mega Man that his creator could decide to unmake him on a whim. And there's a pointless flashback where Dr. Light tells Mega Man to try his best to save Proto Man. We see the boring fight again, and Mega Man eventually shoots at Proto Man successfully with no attempt made to explain why he didn't shield that time. So it's only that he got lucky. He starts blathering in his predictable way and gets reminded he's soul's function. He gets his hand hit, and Proto Man refuses to help rebuild Light Labs and apologize and shoots so that Mega Man could access the sewer in the heart of the castle through a hole. He at least says he'll come home eventually. Points out that he doesn't really need to be fixed, which could make sense because he's not that damaged, and compliments him on his shots before warping away. This is the most confusing character in the comic. Does he support Wily or not? You'd think he would have turned on Wily before if he could now. So Mega Man progresses with Rush Jet in the predictable, boring way, and the story ends with him facing a new yellow devil. Oh gee, I wonder if he'll shoot it in the eye. It's no wonder the comic resorted to a crossover with Sonic again. It makes sense for the sales to get bad when almost abandoned creativity after Raw Moon. When it had such a long dark age, I can't blame people for not giving it another chance after Worlds Unite. Mega Man Issue 47 Mega Man dodges the laser from the Not Yellow Devil, tells Rush to get its eye, and fires a fist through the thing, and Rush destroys its eye. And out of complete nowhere, Mega Man sees Copy Robot again, even though he was completely blown up last time. It wouldn't be so confusing if this was a new Copy Robot who was just created. I have to assume his data was backed up the whole time. But that just makes it forced that he wasn't sent after Mega Man in his second adventure. He bothers Mega Man with the weapons from his current adventure, but thanks to the search snakes, Mega Man finds out the real one's being held still by Rush. But then Rush lets go of his scarf and lets him stand up to be reasoned with, even though he was programmed to kill him by Wily. So he wouldn't have any good in him. So Mega Man has some predictable dialogue, which somehow does convince him that he has a good point, because he'd get a long-term function from acting like him, even though he's programmed to want to kill him. Of course the writer wrote himself into a corner here. So an explosive gets thrown on Copybot's back, and he pushes him to safety and gets blown up. Because god forbid he get sent to a parallel universe. Don't even write him to get convinced by him then. This was supposed to be a kids' comic. So Doc Robot threatens Mega Man, who eventually sees the empty bodies of the second line of Robot Masters. Mega Man avoids the attacks and tries to overload the robot by saying what he has to know isn't true, that they liked being crammed into one body. And this causes the Robot Masters to complain a lot and get distracted enough that the floating magnet sneaks up on their body from behind to shock them damaging the robot because of an idiot's ball of Wily's. You know, he could have just had another copy robot. He gets hit with a different attack. Mega Man gets frozen in time, but Doc Robot can't decide which weapon to use. So that explains why he wasn't frozen in time right away, because all of the Robot Masters wanted to use their weapon. Mega Man defeats him and promises the Robot Masters inside a better future. Obviously, it's good writing that there was only one Doc Robot instead of one for every Robot Master like in the game, because that was ridiculous. 
But that was such an easy, common sense change to improve the story that anybody could have thought of that. And again, it's adaptational dumbass because Wiley probably would have won if he had sent a dock robot for every robot master. He can't refill his energy and get himself repaired at this point. And he pets Rush and ends up base with the Mecha from Wily. Megman only has to use two attacks against the Mecha to effortlessly defeat it. He finds out Wily had the common sense to have a mannequin that looks like him in the Mecha instead of putting himself at risk, which does nothing but repeat recorded lines. For no reason the head springs up, and conveniently, Mega Man finds out it can access Wily's files from here and finds out where he's hiding Gamma because he networked everything. I guess it's all because he originally planned to use Mecha himself. It just seems a bit too convenient. Mega Man uses a weapon to blast a hole, and remembers Dr. Light telling him to destroy Gamma if it's been activated. Mega Man shoots it and pets Rush, somehow John are blind enough to think he already won against a giant Ropa after all of his time fighting the Wily Walker. But he only gave it some minor damage, and the story ends there because it wasted some of its comic space. This was another boring issue about Mega Man defeating Robot Masters in one hit after long fights where he struggles the whole time, just like in the early Sonic X comic. Only there was more interesting because there were more characters. Well, here it only gets interesting when we see Wily threaten Dr. Light with a robot. It's so boring to see those scenes where the robot masters are somehow talking to themselves with little to no focus on the main character, when they're just one-dimensional bad guys. But the only thing memorable is that Roll discovered Otto was damaged. And since Wily betrays him so early, it's pointless, and it makes sense that he didn't care enough to edit Otto's memory and fix any damage because he was planning to use a killer robot any second. This issue somehow spent an entire issue on Wily threatening Dr. Light into agreeing to activate Gamma. It doesn't make sense that he had the security measures have a different password every day for Gamma and make it only work for him if he completely trusted Wily. At that point, why even keep Gamma in his lab? Again, real engineers work on their stuff outside their house. Basically, nothing happened in this issue that mattered, as it dragged out the one plot point it had, and the fight with Proto Man was a waste of time. It was either boring or depressing. This issue is about Meg Man and Proto Man having a boringly uncreative fight with exactly the dialogue you'd expect, until Proto Man gets called his big brother and opens a way forward for him with his blaster. The only reason someone would find this comic interesting when it's being this uncreative is if they never experienced the story of the games before. Even the original scenes are just pointless. Otto gets repaired and Gamma's gonna take hours to activate because it was originally designed to only activate with Dr. Light's voice. And that fills in a plot hole in the game by explaining why Gamma wasn't used earlier. It's sad when that's the only reason the issue is worth reading, and you could stop there and miss nothing. This issue was about Mega Man having to deal with Copy Robot out of nowhere, and then Doc Robot. For once, a comic was being creative after the Raw Moon died. Because there was only one Doc Robot the whole adaptation, and he got defeated because the Robot Masters that were arbitrarily crammed inside of him couldn't choose which weapons to use to defeat him, because they only wanted to use their own, out of arrogance. So Mega Man won because of an idiot's ball of everybody on Wily's side. I'd like to have some creative writing without idiot balls littering it. I can only think of one example in the whole comic that wasn't like that. The virus that Mega Man had. And of course, I haven't been told why I didn't do that again. While well, I'd like to say it's the one good issue in the arc, it's not logical enough to count. While well, it was novel that Copy Robot actually considered acting like Mega Man, it didn't make any sense because it was programmed by Wily. It would make as much sense as Metal Sonic being convinced of this. So it was just a cruel tease to gut punch the audience when it got blown up. There was never any indication that Copy Robot's data was backed up, because obviously he would have faced Mega Man again before if he was. So I didn't take his presence seriously. 
But I'd much rather have a creative story that's nonsense than an uncreative one with nothing to talk about. So this is the best issue in the arc. It's the only one I'd recommend.